What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial we're going to be doing rendering with V-Ray and then some post-production in Photoshop to get the special effect that everybody wants and that's the depth of field effect. So if you don't know what that means, depth of field is basically that effect where you've got a blurry background. You know that's why everybody loves those lenses that give you kind of that you have that short focal length that give you the blurred background and to get that in renderings it's it's difficult you can't get it through uh, you can't get it through Revit you can't get it through V-Ray but uh, you can export a depth channel using V-Ray and then you can uh, compile an image in Photoshop that actually has kind of a fake depth of field but it works very nice but before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day okay so I'm in Revit right now this is the project that I'm uh, going to be using for this. Uh, this is a train slash restaurant slash presentation uh, studio that they've done for a competition that they won with a friend and colleague. So I'm just going to be using this because it has, uh, it's it's very long so we have this where this part is very close and this part is very far away so we want to get the effect where this is kind of sharp and this is all blurry and in the background and I'll talk more about this project uh, in maybe another video. But anyway, so how do you get this effect? So first we need to create a regular rendering using V-Ray or just regular Revit, but I'm just going to be using V-Ray because it works better and we're going to add a channel to render along with this. So I'm just going to go here to V-Ray for Revit and just hit this acquire license to Revit just to runs your license through and make sure, uh, I mean V-Ray runs the license through and it just makes sure that it's legitimate. Okay, so now I'm just going to go here to 3D view and uh, set it to 3D view too because that's the one that we're going to be rendering. Now go to the settings dialog and here I'm just going to go here for channels and here you've got this Z depth channel. Uh, channel. And here I'm just going to make a slight uh, modification here where it says uh, white to black basically means what's close uh, is going to be white and what's uh, further away it's going to be black and it's uh, now saying uh, what is this 1500 or no 15,240 centimeters that's way too long this whole thing is only about uh, 20 meters so I'm just going to send uh, uh, make sure that this says only like 2000 centimeters. So you want to make sure that this corresponds to the size of your image to get an accurate uh, depth of field. So let me just set that black to 2000 and check this and that's pretty much it. Close this off and then I suggest you reopen it just to recheck it because sometimes it, yeah, you see it, it went back but now if I hit it again and let's see just let's do something and open it up again Okay, now it remembered the the number. So make sure to double check everything because for some reason it uh, forgets it the first time. But anyway, let's close out of this. So that's pretty much the only modification we need as far as getting that channel that's going to be an additional rendering that we get. Now for the exposure value, let's leave it at sunshine. Let's use artificial lights off, V-Ray sun, or maybe turn them on. Yeah. And for V-Ray Sun, let's use the dome light. And if you want to learn more about these settings, I suggest you check out uh, the playlist I, that, that's in the description of this video. I've done uh, a lot more V-Ray tutorials. But anyway, let's close this up. And for quality, let's leave it a draft and a resolution. And let's leave it at what it is. And let's just go here and uh, do render production. Wait for a second and now it's going to start rendering. Now it's only starting rendering but if you go here and uh, change this from RGB to Z depth you're going to get this layer. So it's pretty much done with this uh, Z depth layer and it's still rendering the RGB image so while we're waiting we can go here to the Z depth layer and you hit this save current channel button and you can basically save it anywhere on your computer so I'm just going to go to desktop and save it as a JPEG and let's just call it depth. 
Okay, so just to save that as depth. So that's just going to be a layer mask that we're going to be loading in Photoshop later on. So let's just go back to RGB color. Let's see. Okay, this rendering is completed as well. So we can go here, save, and let's save it on desktop again as a JPEG. And let's call this uh, main render or main rendering. Okay, uh, select save, close this off and we can minimize Revit now. So we've got these two uh, files over here. Now let's go to the main rendering, right click and open it up in Photoshop. Wait for a second, yeah here it is. So now I'm just going to select this layer, right click on it and go duplicate layers, hit OK and let's just hit uh, Control 0 to kind of center it and uh, now let's do that uh, that depth effect so or depth of field effect so how do you do that first you need to do take this uh, copied layer and go here to uh, filter find blur and go here and find lens blur and uh, just set it to something you think it's all right i think like 14 works for me and just make sure that this part that's going to be blurry looks uh, well blurry enough for you and hit OK. So once we have this layer, now we need to create the layer mask that's going to unblur this front portion and uh, keep the, the back portion blurred. That sounds funny, that blur word. So let's load this uh, image in like this, hit finish, and then just go and select the whole image, go Control C to copy it, and then, or before that, uh, when I think about it, I'm just going to go here and maybe make it a bit brighter, kind of like this. Yeah, now select the whole thing, go Control C, now we can turn these two layers off, go here, create a layer mask, hold the Alt and click on the layer mask, now we've got the layer mask open and you can go Control V, oops, Control V, why doesn't it work? Okay, we seem to have a problem. Let's turn this on again. Okay, if I make if I unmake it a smart object, let's try again. Control C, turn this all off. Go back here. Control V. Okay, now it's pasted here. So once this is done, you can uh, deselect this uh, selection. And let's see what we have done. So just go to this. And as you can see now, this part is sharp and this front part is blurry and that's not what we want. So we need to double click here and invert this. And now as you can see, this part is blurry and this part is sharp. And as you can see, the ground is kind of uh, uh, blurry over here, but it's not blurry over here closer to the camera. So our layer is working very well. And just to do some other adjustments, I'm maybe going to give it a let's see what works here maybe this yeah this is just less of it it kind of emphasizes the orange perhaps or the yellow and let's just make everything brighter yeah and we have our cool little uh, rendering done. So as you can see now we've got this blurry part and this sharp part and it gives depth to the whole image and it looks a lot more realistic and a lot uh, and a lot better and better. So yeah, that's how you use depth of field to get a more realistic rendering in uh, Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. And please follow me on social media. I will be posting there uh, pretty much every day. Okay, so that's pretty much it, and I'll see you tomorrow.